What's up third grade, it's Mr. Shear here. Welcome to week six remote learning for the third grade. Of course, we're still hanging out in ancient Egypt. I hope you've been enjoying our time here. We'll probably spend a couple more weeks rocking and rolling, but today I want to incorporate some new ideas. Today I want to teach about depth. Depth, not depth, depth. Depth is the illusion of space in art. So depth is how artists make stuff look closer and further away. Depth is the illusion of space in art. Depth is the illusion of space in art. And I want to show you what I mean. Thank you for being so patient and respectful as you listen. I'm just going to do a real quick drawing here. Just look at some cups, because cups are easy to draw. Don't want to waste your time. Fix my mistakes. Fix my mistakes before I race. So I have three cups here. I want to give you one second. I want you to decide which cup is the closest. Which cup do you think is the closest? Hopefully I fooled you guys, because it's an illusion. They're on a dry erase board, it's flat. Nothing is closer or further away, it's the same dry erase board. But what three things did I do to make them look closer? I did three things. This cup is bigger, so the size, the bigger you draw stuff, the closer it looks. I also drew it closer to the bottom of the page. It's placement. And these three cups overlap. So just like right now, the Great Sphinx in this picture is closer to you than I am, it overlaps me. Just right here where these cups overlap, overlap. Those are the three depth devices. Those are the three tools that artists use to, cre to create the illusion of space in artwork. Now I'm gonna send it over to my computer. What's up third grade? Mr. Shear here letting you know about the pyramids of Giza. These massive babies were built in 2560 BCE. So that's like 4,500 years ago. These things were constructed and they were just massive. In fact, the Great Pyramid, the tallest one the king Pharaoh Khufu built was the tallest building in the world for 4,000 years. Just to give you an idea of how tall it was, uh, it is 450 feet high to the top, and if you compare that with the Statue of Liberty, she's only about 305 feet tall. So for 4,000 years, this pyramid back here was the tallest structure in the whole wide world. And here, at the side of the Great Pyramid, you see the three great big pyramids, this one being the Great Pyramid in the middle, one of the, the only uh, of the seven wonders of the ancient world that's still standing. And then you have three smaller pyramids out in front of it. And of course you have the Great Sphinx guarding, guarding the Great Pyramids. Of course there is the Great Sphinx. Something else, something else I found really interesting about the um, pyramids is this, is this is not how they have always looked. This is 4,000 years of uh, soot and wear and tear. And in fact, the sandstone used to be coated with a smooth limestone that was cut precisely and it made a nice, smooth, white, almost shiny surface that these things were coated in. And imagine the hot desert Egyptian sun reflecting off of these white pyramids. And some researchers believe they had a gold top, so they would, look, they would have looked something like this. So quite the difference 4,000 years makes. Another thing I want to think about as we think about this lesson is how artists create depth. Or how do they make stuff look close and far away? So I'm going to review some of the ideas we just talked about. Depth, of course. Depth depth is, is the illusion of, of space and artwork. Depth is the illusion of space and artwork. And if you remember how we do that is there's three things. Size, 
The bigger you draw stuff, the closer it looks. Placement. The closer to the bottom of the page you draw stuff, the closer it looks. And overlap. As artists overlap objects, that gives the artwork depth. And to further illustrate these ideas, I'm going to share a, you, with you a work of art by um, famous artist Aaron Douglas. He was an artist and an art teacher. He actually started the art program at Frist University in Nashville. Here's what his work looks like. And uh, we're looking at him because he was very much inspired by Egyptian art. If you can tell by the profile faces and the frontal eyes that these characters have. Lots of profile faces back here as well. So very much inspired by Egypt. He's one of the artists that we're going to look at with our next lesson. But if you think about it, this guy right here is the closest. He's also the closest to the bottom of the page. He actually runs off the bottom of the page. And he overlaps this guy's foot a little bit. He's bigger than these guys, and he's definitely bigger than these guys. This guy would be the second biggest guy. And in Aaron Douglas's work, he would use circles to represent sound. So you see these circles that, that are um, going throughout the whole piece. And of course this guy's a little bit closer, or, or a little bit further away than this guy, but closer than everybody else. And then our dancers in the middle here are a little bit further back from this guy, a little bit higher up the page, a little bit uh, less saturated. Um, and then these guys in the background are smaller, have all the people overlapping them. So size, placement, and overlap. Size, placement, and overlap. Those are the three things I'm going to want to see in your um, Great Sphinx, Great Pyramids collage that we're going to be making. So our assignment this week is to draw a landscape drawing of the Pyramids of Giza, use crayons and watercolor paint to make a crayon resist, and then color the Great Sphinx color sheet. Cut the Sphinx out and glue them over your landscape. I hope you have a lot of fun doing this and I am going to send it to my send it back to my camera so I can show you how I draw pyramids. Thank you for your time and attention. All right, third grade, I hope you appreciated and enjoyed a little bit of facts and some images about the pyramids of Giza. Now I'm going to show you a very simple way in which I recreate those pyramids. So please pick up a pencil and follow along. Parents feel free to jump right in and have some fun yourselves. First thing I like to do is I like to make a dot. First up, I'll make a rise line way towards the top of the page. Sorry for the squeaky mark, guys. And I'm gonna make a dot about as high as I can reach. I'm gonna go straight underneath and make a dot. I'm gonna go this side and make a dot. And I'm gonna go this side and make a dot. And I'm gonna just draw lines connecting those dots. From the top, all the way down. Moving my arm, not my wrist, drawing lightly so I can fix my mistakes before I and then erase, because I want to erase all the lines I don't want. So I'm gonna take that one out, take that one out, take that one out. There I have the first pyramid. Now if you guys remember from the video, the second pyramid or the great pyramid is the tallest. So if you normally you might Make this a little bit smaller to create a greater sense of depth. But see, as the one in the middle is the largest, we're gonna go ahead and make it the largest. Thank you guys for following along, trying your best. So these things were made over 4,000 years ago, and they're made with blocks weighed up to 80 tons. Can you imagine? Some of, some of these blocks had to travel 500 miles. Lots of work been making these massive monsters. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one more pyramid. So, make this one a little smaller. I mean, just barely above the horizon. Straight down.
guys have fun working in your sketchbooks as you create your own pyramids of Giza. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my sketchbook so you can see the work that I've done now. Thank you for working so hard and uh, appreciate you viewing this video. Hang in there, guys. So as you guys can see, I have used size, placement, and overlap in my drawing of the three pyramids or the great pyramids. I did draw lightly. I fixed my mistakes before I erased. I drew with my arm and not my wrist, and I did draw using the whole page. My next step is to color it with crayons. Now I'm gonna be careful not to color in the whole thing so I have room to paint. I look forward to showing you my next step as soon as I get it finished. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I have completed phase two. I have colored and outlined, but did not paint the whole thing. Now I'm gonna finish it off by painting in a sunset. As you can see, I have now painted mine, and while this dries, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my Sphinx out. So be prepared for that. Well, hey there, third grade. I hope everybody's having fun making their landscape drawings of the pyramids of Giza, maybe using some wild colors like I did, maybe using some normal colors. It's up to you. You're the artist, you make what you gotta do. But we gotta talk about using scissors. It's very important that when you use scissors, you are in the spot. I do not want you roaming around your house with scissors. Sit on your bottom, use your scissors. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my great sneaks that I colored for you just to model the right way to use scissors. If you will give me just a second, I wanna show you. Of course, I just colored the sticks. I did not color the, color the whole page because I knew I was going to be cut, cutting it out. So when you cut, you always wanna use the back of the scissors and you always wanna to try to move the paper and not the scissors. So as I go around this elbow here, I'm gonna move my paper. If you use the back, you can get pretty detailed. And these are things I picked up in art education classes in college, so giving you guys a little bit of head start on what I got. So you can move the paper, not the scissors. Taking my time. Probably be doing a better job if I wasn't talking. Move the paper. I'm just going to cut that off. Appreciate you guys tuning in, following along. I hope this is helpful for you. I miss seeing you guys in school, but at least we're still making art, right? All right, now this bad boy is ready to get glued onto my pyramid drawings overlapping the three great pyramids. I look forward to showing you what it looks like when it's done and showing you the right way to glue. So stay tuned. Okay guys, thanks for hanging in there with me for so long. I really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying stuff. I hope you're learning stuff. The last thing we gotta do is glue on our Sphinx. So I'm gonna kind of figure out about where I want it. I think about right, maybe right there. I'll go ahead and cut that bottom off when I'm done. So to glue, what, what you need to do is I always try to use Elmer's white glue, school glue, um, or glue all. And it just works. Glue sticks don't ever work for me. And you just want to use little bitty dots of glue around the outside edge of what you're trying to glue down. You don't need a whole lot of glue because paper doesn't weigh a whole lot. So little bitty dots around the outside edge. Dot, dot, not a lot. Ladybug dots. You guys heard those things before, I'm sure. And remember, I'm going to cut that bottom off, so I don't even need that much down there. Just around the edge, just around the edge. Little dots, little dots, little dots, little dots, little dots. I kind of wanted about where it's at, so I'm gonna just carefully flip it over. I'm gonna let them run off the bottom a little bit. I might, yeah, we'll see. How about right there? Boom. And then I'll let that dry, and I'm gonna cut that bottom leg off, cut this off where it runs off, so I have a nice clean edge. And I will show you the finished project in just a minute. All right, so there you have it, third grade. This is my finished. Great pyramid landscape with the Great Sphinx collage. 
using my three depth devices, size, placement, and overlap. I hope you guys had fun. I hope you're proud of what you made. I hope you're taking care of yourself and each other. And until next time, this is Mr. Shear from Studio 37. Have a great week, guys.